Hey everybody, it's Phil from Non-Standard Music Japan. And today what I want to talk about is not... Well, I'm going to talk. I'm not going to play some music. I'm going to talk about the first in a series of things about equipment. And probably this is going to be an ongoing series. But the thing that sparked me is that I bought this FCB uh, 1010 MIDI foot controller from Behringer or Behringer depending on how you want to say it. And I got it cheap. These things are available pretty cheap. They're very powerful. They're pretty big, uh, but they're built like, you know, tanks when they survive. I got this one uh, used, but in great condition in the box and everything like that for under a hundred US dollars. And I want to talk today about setting it up in particular. And this one, I'm going to talk about setting it up to be used in Ableton. Because a lot of people want to do that. A lot of people use Ableton. And I'm, later, I'm going to do another one that talks about using it in Logic. Because I use Logic for a lot of the stuff that I do. So I'm going to adjust my hair. And then get around to adjusting the barrier. So what I'm going to do is start clean. And the best way to do that is to do a factory reset. The way you do a factory reset is to hold down the one and six. I'm going to do this with my hands rather than my feet, if you don't mind. Uh, one and six and turn on the power. You see a little countdown over here and then everything should be hunky dory. Now we can turn it off. And because the other thing we need to do is to get out of this crazy direct select mode. And the way we do that is to power up again with the down button or the escape button, depending on what, what you want to read there. Held down for three seconds and bing. You uh, press the up button. MIDI function is lit and you press the one button to uh, choose that. And then you press the up button to choose your MIDI channel. Um, personally, I like to run this on MIDI channel two because that's just the kind of way I roll. And we press the up button again, and then we hold down, that goes into config, which we can do some other stuff that we're gonna do later maybe. And then we're gonna hold down the down button for three seconds. There's a faster way to get it out of the um, uh, direct select, but you know, I wanted to change the MIDI function, so I showed it all in one. That's kind of the general get this thing set up. Reset to factory, turn off direct mode, and set the MIDI channel. And you don't have to do those, and I'm not going to do those again in the next video, so maybe you want to come back here and see how you do that. Just if you want to get a nice clean, if you just bought your FCB 1010 and you want to get it nice and clean, that's how you do it. Okay. Let's move on to uh, setting this thing up for Ableton. Now, Ableton, as you know, you can assign uh, MIDI controllers to almost anything, but Ableton is finicky about the control change numbers. It can only accept 22 uh, to 31, and I think it's 84 to 91, something like that. So we may have to make sure it's in that range. So that, it's unfortunately out of the box, doesn't come like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a preset zero to control general things in Ableton. And here's how we do that. And we're gonna do this over and over. So we wanna start with switch pedal number one. So we let's select that and then hold down the down button for a few seconds until the switch one, switch two light is flashing green. And we are into the programming mode and we say, yes, hit the up button and say, yes, we want to program. Now, if you're just on a factory reset, what will happen is that these three lights will be on one, eight and nine. We want to make sure that one is turned off. 
And I'm going to quickly explain what these buttons do because there's a lot of confusion about it uh, on the internet. One through five is a program change. So if this is on, that means when you hit, you can set five program changes, I guess, on each on each foot switch. Why you would do that, I don't know. So, um, so you can change five things at one time. That's what they mean by controlling five MIDI devices. You can send five different program changes at once by hitting a foot switch. We're not doing that here. So we want to turn off by holding down for a few seconds number one. So we don't want to be ch sending any program changes, but we do want to be sending the two control functions. So what we want to do is turn on six and turn on seven. We can leave eight and nine as they are. That's the expression pedals. We're not doing anything with that right now. So by turning on six and seven, what we're saying is we're going to send out two control uh, changes. Yeah. When we hit a switch, one, when we hit it, second, when we hit it again. And that's very important because with Ableton, if you don't, so I've seen other instructions where they have one control set, but the problem is that that only turns something on or something off, but not both on and off. And if you want to use these, like I sometimes do to control effects, turn them on and turn them off, you need to have both set. And here's the other trick. Well, I'll show you the other trick in a second. So let's set the first control. So remember, we activated foot switch with number one, we hit the down, we went in, and we're now ready to control this thing. So we hit number six again. Let's say we're gonna say it's flashing. We wanna do control number one, hit the up to say we're doing. The light's flashing, saying what controller number, MIDI CC number, are you gonna send out? So let's start, why it starts at 26, we don't know. Let's start with 22. So we hit 22, two, two, two. Two times, hit up. What's the value you're gonna send? Now this is my other little trick. The way it's done by default is that controller one sends out a zero, controller two sends out a 127. In my experience, what that means is pretty much you have to hit everything twice because zero is a turn off and 127 is a turn on. So in places where it matters, uh, for instance, like hitting a stop button on the looper, which we'll talk about another time, you want the first press to be the 127. Otherwise you have to hit everything twice. So I do 127 first. 127, store it by hitting up. And now we're gonna send controller message number two. So we hit number seven, make sure that's flashing, hit up. We're setting it to be the same controller number. That's important. We're just gonna send an on, then an off. So 22, hit up. What's the value? Now this time, like I say, we're doing it backwards. We're gonna set it to be zero. So that's how you set, and then we hold down, sorry, hold down the down button, and that writes it into memory, and that thing is set. Now, switch number one, when we hit it the first time, it sends out a 127. When we hit it the second time, it sends out a zero. That's your basic. What we need to do now is do that for all 10 of these buggers. And there are people who, who use graphical con editors. I purposely didn't want to do that because I wanted to explain what all this stuff does. It's not complicated. Really, the FCB 1010 is not really complicated. It's just cryptic because it has a two or three digit LED as your only input. So let's go, let me go through. I'll probably set this on like fast mode on the video and I'll go through and I'll do. So I've done controller 22. I'll do the other ones, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31 on the other pedals, and then we'll come back in a second. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're coming to the last one. Switch number 10. Hold down the down button to get into the edit mode. Hit the up button to say yes, I really want to edit. 
hold down number one because we don't want to send program changes. Hold down number six, yes, we want to send controller one. Hold down seven, yes, we want to send controller two. Hit number six to get it flashing. Hit number up to say, yes, I really want to do it. We're doing button number 10, so that's 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Up, and the value we want is 127 for controller one. Now, hit number seven to say, yes, we want to edit controller number two, hit up. Again, we want to send out CC31, say up, and this time we want to send out value zero, say up, and we're all done. Hold down the down button to save it. And that's it. We now have bank number zero set to turn things on and then off, as opposed to off and then on, on and then off inside of Ableton. And then it's simply a matter of plugging this thing into your computer, going into the MIDI mapping mode and setting it. And I'm going to do that in a second. Thanks for watching. Okay, and we're back. This time we're hopefully looking at my screen. I've opened up a brand new Ableton Live session and uh, what I'm going to do is add in three effects just to demonstrate this turning on and turning off business. I'm going to chuck in a compressor, a, oh gosh, let's do a simple delay and a bright room reverb, why not? Now what I do is I turn them off and then assign my MIDI controls. And I've got my uh, FCB 1010 on the floor there. So what I'm gonna do is simply choose the power button for the compressor and hit switch number one. Choose the power button for the delay, hit switch number two, and the power button for the reverb and hit switch number three. And go out of MIDI mode and now we'll be able to see that I can turn on the compressor on and off the compressor on and off the delay on and off the reverb and it's that simple setting those two values lets you turn things on and off so I hope you found this helpful and interesting I'm gonna do another video where I talk about using the looper in Ableton and also doing all of this for logic because it's slightly different for logic. Okay, see you soon. Bye for now.